gosh. What if, what if they don't like it? What if they don't like the content or anything? What if they don't What's like the, the books? With you? What if they don't like the books? You know, like the books that we like? What if, what if they don't like it? What do you mean, what if? I'm sure they will. What if they don't like me? What if they like you better, huh? Have you ever thought about that? No, 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 no. Well, what if they don't like the whole, whole show? What I'm sure they will. Right, guys? Yeah. Oh, hi. <laughs> aren't supposed to see that. I was having a little bit of a meltdown, but I think everybody a kind of... A little bit? That seemed like a big meltdown. Anyways... You think too much. Yeah, maybe I do think too much, but you know what? At least I think. But anyways, before he starts talking, there is a story... What does that mean? Nothing. Huh? That means nothing. Nothing at all. There's a story about what ifs. You know what? Like, what if something happens, you know, or whatever. And so... Would you like to stay for the story? Yes. All right. So without further ado, let's get straight into the what ifs. The what ifs. <laughs> Book Birdies presents The What Ifs. Read to you by Berlin. Written by Emily Kilger. Illustrated by Zoe Persico. Cora was a nervous girl. Always jumpy, always on edge, always wondering if something grim was going to happen. Because of this, the what ifs loved her. Heavy, lumpy, and grumpy, the what ifs are everywhere in bright rooms and dark corners, in busy hallways and hushed libraries, in big cities and small towns. They slink in from unknown places and swiftly attach themselves to people when they least expect it. Then they whisper a question so quietly, so softly, so gently that the person usually doesn't know the what-ifs are there at all. From the moment the sun first peeked through her window in the morning to the time she pulled a warm quilt over her head at night, Cora's what-ifs followed her every move. What if the sky is falling? What if you trip over a tree? What if the fish slaps you in your face? What if you fart so loudly in class? What if my dog runs away? What if I forget my homework? What if the sun stops shining? What if I break my crayons? Many people think about their what ifs for a moment or two, but can briskly brush them off. Cora, though, could not. It didn't matter if the what ifs questions were silly or frightening, likely or impossible. As soon as Cora thought about them, the what ifs grabbed hold of her. What if you hit someone with a ball? One week, Cora had more what ifs than usual. Her piano recital was just days away. Even though she had practiced and perfected her song, the what ifs started creeping in. What if nobody likes your music? What if you break your seat? <laughs> what if you push the wrong note? <laughs> what if my fingers shake? Cora questioned on Monday. What if I make a mistake? Cora wondered on Tuesday. What if nobody comes? She thought on Wednesday. What if too many people come? She worried on Thursday. By the day of her recital, the weight of the what-ifs fell unbearable. Cora stood backstage, anxiously awaiting her turn to perform. The longer she waited, the more what-ifs appeared, each one grabbing hold and weighing her down more than the last. What if they're better than what if you miss it? What if you can't play it correctly? What if you forget your notes? What if you trip on the stage? What if your finger itches? What if I trip on stage? What if the bench is too tall? What if the pedals are squeaky? What if I start coughing? What if I play the wrong note? What if nobody claps? 
What if someone chose the same music? What if someone plays better? What if the keys get stuck? What if everybody is better what than your you? music? Why not if I fall off the stage? <laughs> Cora, a small voice whispered, are you all right? Oh, great, Cora thought. What if Stella thinks I'm a crybaby? What if she doesn't understand? It's nothing, was all Cora could muster, before a tiny sob escaped her thinly pressed lips. <laughs> it doesn't sound like nothing, Stella said. Cora took a deep breath and said in a hushed voice, I, I, I just, I just have too many what ifs. They make me imagine bad things that could happen. Like, what if I mess up? Or, what if I sneeze during my song? Everybody gets what ifs, Cora. Just a minute ago, I asked myself, what if Cora's sad and I can help her? Listening to Stella, Cora started to wonder, what if she can help me? What if I can trust her? I wish mine were like that. My what ifs are grim. Cora looked down. Do you ever have good what ifs? Stella asked. I didn't know there were good ones, Cora whispered. Of course there are, Stella said. Like, what if there's chocolate cake after our recital? Or what if I play better than ever? Cora chimed in, peering at the boy pounding his piece on the piano. Cora suddenly felt her what-ifs begin to change. The heavy, lumpy, and grumpy what-ifs slowly slunk away while new ones arrived in their place. Just then, the teacher announced it was Cora's turn. Cora walked out to the piano without tripping. The bench was just the right height. Her hands quivered as they hovered over the keys. But then she you sat down and began to play, you got this. and the I grim what if slowly continued to disappear. Song. You're you playing beautifully. You play so sound like an angel. Believe in your play so gracefully. Until. <gasps> oh no! What if everybody laughs at me? What if I get booed off the stage? Cora wanted to cry. She tried to ignore the people staring, waiting for her next move. <clears throat> then, out of the corner of her eye, Cora saw Stella. <sighs> what if I can do this? She asked herself. Cora took a deep breath and started to play again with confidence. Her fingers danced across the keys. When she finished, the room filled with applause. Cora took her bow and smiled at Stella. She couldn't help but wonder, what if I made a new friend today? The end. Hey, how did you like the story? enjoyed that story. Did you really enjoy the story or are you just saying that? Yeah, that was a good story. Yeah, because there was a whole bunch of horrible what ifs. Like, what if she was going to mess up and what if she was going to this or that? You yeah, know? they all cling to her. Like little did. annoying bugs. And, and that really did happen to me earlier. I kept thinking, what if what if they don't like the content? What if they don't like the same book as I do? And so I was a little bit worried, just a tiny bit worried. Yeah, but you think too much, just like Cora. And then I liked the part when she was playing the piano and kind of messed up, but and then she got her flow back and people liked it. That's true. And then Stella, she made her new friend Stella. Stella was like, well, what if like the good things, like have you ever had good what ifs? Like. What if you do great, you know, at the recital? What if... What and she if, did great! What if they like me? What if they really like me? And they did! No, 
I mean me? Oh, they're not gonna like you better than me. That's mean. But you know what? Everybody likes Pesky Pascal. It's so. just Pascal. Oh, well, whatever. Anyway, so um, we enjoyed the story. I hope you enjoyed the story. Yes. And we will see you hopefully next time for story time. Bye-bye. Bye. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. Tap the bell to be notified for new video uploads. Thanks for watching and joining me on my reading adventures. See you next time on Book Birdies.